Welcome everyone again to our A to J Author New User webinar. This is Jessica Frank. I'm A to J Author's Project Manager. So today's topic, we're going to talk about having a single A to J guided interview that can have multiple A to J document assembly templates. So this is for an A to J front end and an A to J author back end. Um, and it will allow you to have a single interview that will conditionally assemble uh, multiple forms or multiple templates based on a user's answer. So the sample I created here has one guided interview and three templates. It's a sample judgment of dissolution of marriage for the land of uh, for the state of A to J author. In the state of A to J author, everybody gets a judgment of dissolution of marriage in their package, but only people with children would get the order of support, um, and only people who who have children and actually are going to be paying child support would get the order of support. And then people who have non-marital property, that's property that they either had before the marriage, was inherited, um, received by gift, or for some other reason is not to be included in the general marital property uh, division, they need to fill out a non-marital property form. So there are four potential outcomes from my interview. So everybody is gonna get uh, the first form. So you could just get the for first form if you didn't have kids and you didn't have non-marital property. You could get form one and form two. So the, just the judgment and the order of support if you have a child uh, with child support payments coming, um, but non-marital property. You can get the judgment of dissolution and non-marital property form if you do not have children but do have non-marital property. And then the end user could potentially get all three forms if they have uh, children with child support and non-marital property that has to be divided. So this gives you the ability to not have to upkeep separate interviews based on if people have kids or don't have kids, um, if they have non-marital property or don't have non-marital property. This allows you to just have one interview that can be updated um, just one time if need be or converted if you're tra or translated if you're uh, doing it in multiple languages. But the output can be more broad or can capture more people in it um, and allow you to have a greater impact by just including one or two more forms. For the most part, I pulled these forms um, off of a court's website. I changed only the name to of the state to A to J author um, land. And other than that, these were real court forms, um, really for the judgment of dissolution of marriage, the order of support and non-marital property form. Um, and so it allows you to um, have these multiple templates that really don't require very many more questions in your interview, but the impact can be much greater. So the main thing that works, that does the conditional inserting of these templates is the conditional logic in each individual template itself. So on my judgment of dissolution of marriage, I don't have any conditional logic. That's the left screenshot um, over here. So I want every end user to get the judgment of dissolution of marriage. But if I wanted it to be conditionally inserted, and I'll show you the example for the order of support and the non-marital property form, um, I would check this box and then I would be able to insert a variable and evaluate uh, a condition based on that variable. This is the PDF uh, template option. This conditionally inserting logic is also available in text templates. If you remember, there are two different types of templates in A to J, a text template, which you start from a blank um, document, essentially a blank form, uh, and you add elements to it. That's a text template. The PDF template is where you upload an existing PDF and, and automate on top of it, add the variables to the appropriate spaces. So with the text template, it's under the template options, and it's only avail editable once you check the box next to conditional logic. With the text, with the PDF template, it always displays on the on the options on the left of your PDF editor, um, but it only evaluates if you check the box next to conditional logic. This is a zoom in if I had for the order of support template, where I only want it to. Uh, use this template if order for support TF is true. I can evaluate if it's false, if it equals, does not equal, is greater than, is less than. If I pick one of the last four options, so I'm going to evaluate it against some other value or some other variable, another field will populate underneath um, this that lets me pick what variable or value I'm evaluating order for support against. 
Um, but for my case, I only want this to assemble if the end user has said that they um, they have children. And then I'm going to ask them a few follow up questions that are relevant only to the support um, form. But it was like three extra questions uh, that needed to be added to my interview to automate this entire second template as well. So only if order of support is true is my template going to assemble. So for this, while I was creating the um, the PowerPoints for today and doing the sample, I decided to do the to create a new sample exercise so that you can actually take what you've learned today, which our webinar today is going to be relatively short. Um, take that and actually practice it and do it. So I created a sample exercise that teaches you how to create the interview that I will show you in a minute with one interview, three templates, the judgment for dissolution, the order of support, and the non-marital property form. The instructions and screenshots um, are all included at uh, a to jauthororg slash content slash sample exercise, multiple A to J templates, single A to J got interview. So that's an awful painful uh, URL. I'll put it in the chat at the end of the call, but you can also find it if you go to our website and you go to uh, learn, if you hover over learn and go to sample exercises, these sample exercises are now 11 different exercises that you can use while you're learning A to J author. But the one for today is the sample A to J guide interview and A to J PDF templates, multiple templates and a single A to J guide interview. So as I mentioned, if you go here, I have, um, it's the equivalent of about 30 pages of uh, text in a Google Doc of instructions with GIFs and screenshots. A lot of them are screenshots. Um, I would anticipate that this would take you about an, uh, probably about two hours to work through um, following all the instructions, but none of it's particularly difficult in terms of authoring um, if you've ever used A to J author before. So um, you can follow the tips here. I'll be adding some a section to our authoring guide as well about multiple templates, but this lets you practice right now with it. So for that, I'm going to go into the uh, the interview and the template that I made. So here are my three templates. Um, you can see that the order of support has the conditional logic as well. So does the non-marital property form. And then my interview itself, um, I only had to add about, let's see, I had to add um, how is the marital or how is the order of support, like three questions for order of support, four questions for order of support, and um, just two additional questions for the non-marital property form. So overall, it's not a lot of extra work to get more bang for my buck for my end user. If they're already filling out once, their name, their the petitioner, the respondent, the details of the case, children, that kind of thing, you might as well reuse that information if possible. So um, I will uh, publish this and include a link for it with this training video. Um, and I'll put it at the end of the sample exercise on our website as well. Um, but I went through the interview and I created a couple of different um, answer files to show you so we can just go test assemble this. So I went through and I created the first sample exercise or first uh, run through. I used all three. I triggered all three documents. So I said that I do have kids. I do. I answered the support question. And then I said I do have non-marital property and I answered the non-marital property questions. If we test assemble that. And open it up, you can see the different examples. So the petitioner and the respondent who testified facts about the case, how they're gonna split up marital property, that they do need an order of support, um, and that they do, oops, sorry, scroll up a little, um, that they do have non-marital property and the non-marital property form is going to be attached. If I scroll down, the order of support then is included, how much child support, how often, when it should start, whether or not it's in the guidelines for that state, and then um, the non-marital property form. So what am I keeping as the petitioner? How did I get that property? And what's the respondent keeping? And how did the respondent uh, acquire that property that makes it non-marital? So this is the example of all three assembling. 
if I go back and clear my answers and reload my answer file that has just the two. This one, I, um, I believe I said I do need an order of support, but I don't need the non-marital property form. So if we open up this one. I have uh, different people, Sally and Samuel instead of Jane Doe. Um, but so just the dissolution of marriage and just the order of support. So different amounts here, but then if I scroll down, that's it. That's all this end user got. And then it is possible just to have the judgment of dissolution of marriage alone. So that's pretty simple. It's fairly easy to, if you already know how to automate a template, to automate it conditionally based on one factor, um, one true-false variable, one condition that you're testing against uh, um, as to the appropriateness of adding that document to the assembled package for that end user. But it really does make a big difference for the end user if they got the complete package rather than just getting one template and then having to redo it again for the order of support with a lot of the same information. So um, as always, feel free to reach out to me if you have questions about A to J author, questions about authoring. So thank you all for attending and I will uh, see you all in April.